Good morning, good morning everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out this video. Um, this reading today is going to be aimed at um, exes or, you know, your current relationship if it is turbulent, toxic, um, if you two fight so much. Basically a toxic partnership that you just can't break away from, okay? The title of the reading is going to be, Are They Toxic? Am I Toxic? Or are we both fucked up? All right. And um, this reading was inspired by a very, very good friend of mine. Um, I will not, um, I won't give their name out just for privacy reasons. But this was actually a post of theirs uh, not too far back. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been there too. You know, that there's always that one partner that you just can't give up. There's always that one person that you keep hoping and praying that they'll change and, you know, it just, they never do. Or worse, you know, you just feel like you need to tolerate their behavior or for whatever reason, you know, maybe you feel you cannot find anyone else. I mean, you know, you know, and, I, and I'll be honest too, you know, like I said, been there, done that. And it's like, you know, for the longest while. I was, I mean, well, we weren't together long, but, you know, one of my partners, we were together for about a year, but it was just like, oh, he's the only thing I can get, you know, what am I going to do without him, and, you know, who's going to love me, and, you know, it was re a really sad point in my life, and as, you know, you know, this person that I had been with only a year, you know, it took me, it took me almost a good dec. no, no, no I don't want to say a decade, I guess... Yeah, about like five to seven years to like officially get over him, you know, because I used to think about him with someone else and it used to just kill me, you know, and I, I used to think like, why wasn't I good enough? And, you know, but now that I've grown, you know, I, I see that, you know, back then I did act psycho. I was just, you know, I was totally, you know, out there, you know, and it's just we all go through it. We really do. Or, you know, if you don't, you know. There's something that, that, you know, is a negative trait in some relationship or another. And if not, and you're perfect, hey, you need to get up in the comments and give us some good relationship advice. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, in other words, I've been there and I've done that. And even after that relationship, you know, while trying to get over that person, it was like I attracted more toxicity, you know. It's just I attracted guys that just, you know that just wanted um, just, you know, a sexual relationship but nothing more. Um, either that or they were too, you know, their temper was explosive. Um, they were players. Um, you know, it, it just, it is how it is. And, you know, that that's why I always say energy is everything. And when you're caught up in a certain energy, you emit that energy and you attract that energy right back to you. And sometimes it just gets worse and worse, you know. And then especially when you're caught in this relationship with someone it's like, it, you know, it, it it is hard to break away from, but, um, you know, you got to start understanding, you know, like who needs to start making the change. And usually it's both sides, you know, and, um, you know, are you willing to make that change? Are you willing to finally set your foot down and say, you know what? I don't deserve this shit. Or you know what? Uh, my partner doesn't deserve to be going through this. You know, maybe I need to go. Maybe I need to remove myself from the situation. And the truth is, is yes, it's hard, especially when you're married and established with a home, your children. Yes, it uh, it's going to be hard. And that's just so sad. And, and, you know, not all of us have that support system, you know. Uh, thank God, you know, I, I had my mom, my sisters and everyone to fall back on. <clears throat> Excuse me you know, at the time of my breakup. And, you know, I had a lovely support system in raising my son, you know, thank God, you know, I never had to put him in a daycare where he was with strangers. I never had to um, leave him at a friend's house, you know, where, you know, something could have happened. You know, my son's always been in the safe hands of my sister while I've worked, you know, or my mother. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's always worked out. We've always been a team in raising you know, my son especially, and, you know, my mom has two teenagers, we raise them, and, 
you know, it just, it, it's a blessing by God. And I thank God every day that it feels like I never had to live the life of a single parent. But I know that that breakup was so awful. And like my family, my family knew how I was, <laughs> you know, and, and I hope they could say that they've, that they've seen a change in me. But, you know, it's just, uh, my family saw it all, you know, my, my outbursts, my crying, you know, Toxicity is just never a good trait, but it is a part of growth and it is up to you if you're going to change that or not. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, I, I really hope to let you walk away from this reading with hope, with guidance, um, you know, whatever messages come to me, um, you know, from my guides and angels, my, you know, spirit, you know, just bear with me, you guys. Okay. And um, with that being said, we have three piles. So just think about this can be a past partnership, too, if you're here and um, you just want to know. You know, I had one one viewer, you know, think of a past uh, situation with the career and the crush reading. <laughs> Use this reading however you see fit. OK, um, even, you know, just think of it. OK, your vibe right now. Are you attracting nothing but toxic relationships? Um, do you have relationships where you two grow very jealous with each other and, you know, explosive fights occur, you know, um, whatever your situation toxic, if it is toxic, let's see if we can give you some guidance. Okay. Um, either way, thank you so much for stopping in to uh, view the video and let's see how it goes. Okay. So we have three piles and they're crossed because it's their energy and it's your energy. Okay. So pile number one is going to be the Hamza brace, Hamza hand bracelet. Okay. Pile number two is this bead bracelet. Pile number three is going to be the Hamza eye bracelet. Okay, it's focusing now. Okay. You can choose one, you can choose all. Again, I must stress the importance that you, this is a general reading. Um, it's not a personal reading, okay? And if I ever come across a little edgy in the reading, you know, I'm sorry. I get passionate about some situations. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, okay? I am going to try and make it as positive as I can, I promise, my loves. But look. It, we just, we need truth here, okay? Because you can never make the change until you just, you know the truth and until you face your truth. All right, so let's just see what we can get here, okay? So at that, I will see you at your pile. All righty, so my pile number one, for those of you who chose the Hamza hand, okay? Now, I had this plan to direct the energy, you know, this is you, this is them, but I'm just going to refer to one energy or the other, okay? So just bear with me. I hope this doesn't cause confusion, but, you know, let's just bear with me through it, okay? So what I'm feeling here is, you know, one energy feels entitled, okay? One energy doesn't really have a goal in mind, but I feel like they feel really entitled, like, like, um... You know, one energy, it was like, you know, one person feels like, hey, I took you out of a bad situation. You know, you owe me. You would still be here doing this if it wasn't for me. That's what I'm feeling here. But I mean, I feel like, you know, at first when their heart was in the right place where they really loved you and they did want to see you do better. So they removed you from like a situation. I feel like it could have been like toxic family or like burdensome work or something like that, you know. Um... Just for a couple of you, I'm feeling music, something to do with music, the arts, you know, like, you know, maybe they're helping your musical career or something. Okay, but that's just for a very small, small number of you. But um, th th that's what I'm feeling here, you know, like they're just entitled. And like I see you, you know, like. I feel like through this betterment, like some, you know, somebody came up, you know, somebody is doing better. So one partner has money now. The other one is the entitled one, the one who helped the other. So, you know, the one with the money, you know, you're not really giving unless you expect something back. Not you. I'm just saying um, this could be them. This could be you. And it's like. 
I'm sorry. I'm feeling one energy that, and I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to offend you, but this could be your energy where it's just like, you know, you don't feel like you don't want to help anyone or you don't feel you should because, you know, you worked for your own on your own, you know, whatever you received. I mean, whatever you have, you earned it. Nobody else. Okay. And I feel like, you know, although they credit themselves as, you know, I took, you know, him or her out of a bad situation, they owe me, you know, we should have a joint bank account. It shouldn't be separate. You know, you feel like, hey, th you know, yeah, thank you. But, you know, I'm the one that had to put in the work. And so it's, you know, th these are my things, you know, this is my money. If this is your energy, I also feel that, you know, you like, you might say very hurtful things to them as well. You might bring up stuff that they're ashamed of. You know, basically it's, it's arguments of hitting below the belt always. But for you, I feel like you're just really, really trying to protect yourself you don't like crying you don't like feeling weak you don't like you feel like if you give in they're going to take advantage of you all over again and they're going to do what they were doing in you know if you came from a family that constantly you know tore you down who bashed your beliefs I mean you feel like this is what they're going to do to you and really I mean although they feel entitled I feel like this energy here really means good they're really loving I feel like and please I can already hear it no I'm not saying it's your fault the, the purpose of this is knowing where you should change you know knowing what you should work on okay not change work on okay soul having your soul is all about growth evolving you know, and it's it's beautiful if you really kind of step out of the box, look at yourself and then go back in and then you're ready to execute those changes. It's a real beautiful thing because, you know, like I said, there is no judgment. I was once a toxic person myself. I was just out of control. A anyone from my past can tell you horror stories. OK, now, you know, like in my 30s, you know, I've really had to look back and I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> I keep thinking of that monster in law <laughs> movie where um, Viola's watching a video of how she lashed out on that little girl singer. And then, you know, she's sitting with her doctor and she goes, oh, thank God I've changed. <laughs> I'm sorry. We just need a little humor in here. But look, OK, don't be ashamed. It's OK. And you might get pissed off at this video. It's OK. I understand. But look, stop trying to lash out and don't. You know, you don't need to hit someone below the belt just to protect your feelings, okay? If they're saying something that really pisses you off, just walk off. No response is better than than a response that's going to hurt, okay? Mm, hold on. I really feel you're going through a transformation, though. I, I really feel it. And, you know, you're going through some sort of transformation where. Because you see the rebel, the message on the rebel card, excuse me. It's challenges authority to affect social change, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. You already know what's right. Like, I feel like you can look at a spiritual leader and, you know, even like a tarot reader like myself, <laughs> but you can even, you could look at them. You're like, you know what? You're full of shit. Like, I'm not going to listen to you. And I, I feel like you could really suss people out that you can do, you know, you know, but when it comes to your partner, for some reason, it's a misunderstanding. I, I don't know why, but it's just, it is what it is. Um, what, what I feel here is, you know, you could really vibe out on people. You know who to associate with. You know who to keep your distance from. You know who to trust. And then you have this mentality, don't trust anyone. But you know who you can kind of lean on in times of trouble. But the truth is, let your guard down a little bit, okay? Don't expect yourself to always carry the burden, okay? Think of it like this. I know you worked hard for your finances, but if you give a little to help someone... 
you know, don't expect anything back. But just know God blesses you when your heart is truly in the right place. With that being said, if you find that that same person is coming back to you to take advantage, just say, hey, I helped you last time. I don't have the money or the resources to do it this time. You can help people and then set your healthy boundaries, okay? And you're going to see that when your heart is truly there to help, you are blessed magnificently. And that is not a lie. But when you're just helping for the sake of getting back, it, that, that blessing is void. And I know that sounds kind of contradictory, but, you know, just help people. What, what does it hurt to buy someone a gallon of milk? What does it hurt to take a 20 out of your pocket and give it to them for gas? You know, at first it's like, yeah, it's my $20 that I worked for. You know, like, um, let's just say you get paid um, $10 an hour. You know, that's, I think that's around the minimum wage in California. And it's just like, you know, oh, somebody wants 20 bucks. Well, that's two hours of my work. Did they work that? No, I understand. <laughs> it's just an example. And you know, I feel like your partner really comes from a very, very good place. I, I feel like they're so sweet and giving, but their downfall is entitlement. Um, they mean right, but towards the end, you know, if you're still, if they feel like you're being too confrontational, if you're being too greedy with resources, it just kind of hurts their feelings. And then they end up being a jerk, you know. And then with you, it's like, I feel like, you know, you have worked so hard for your stuff. I feel like you have been through so much and, you know, you kind of have a bitter take on the world now. And I understand, but it's like, how long can you be better? You know, you got to forgive the past and move on. And forgiving does not mean that you allow that same situation to occur over and over and over again. No, forgiving it is like, you know, you're... Forgiving the people who did it so you don't have to walk in a room and be like, "Ugh, I can't deal with them. Okay, you forgive them. So next time you see them, it's just, it's neutral, it's friendly, it's civil. But you will not allow them to do that ever again. You know, if they ever come to you, oh, hey, remember back then? Yeah, I remember. Forget about, you know, <laughs> however you deal with it. But, you know, just forgive the situation and move on. And I feel like, you know, when it comes to you and your partner... You two just misunderstand each other, okay? And then your partner, yes, they are a little entitled. And then the fights happen. And then, you know, you guys end up saying a lot of things. And I think it's especially on you where you hit below the belt, okay? So try to refrain from that, okay? And then, you know, just kind of try to give back. If you have kids, oh, kids are the most innocent, most beautiful beings, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care if it's a bad child. But I think that's where you can start. Give back to children because children are the future, ladies and gentlemen. You know, what does it hurt? You know, in, I know in California or in San Diego especially, teachers are short on school supplies or teachers are buying school supplies on their own, out of their own pocket. My mom is a daycare teacher. And on the daily, I see that that she, you know, she's always finding things at Dollar Tree, at Walmart, you know, She's always trying to find things for her children. I feel like this one should be turned over. And, you know, it's out of her own pocket. Does she ask to be reimbursed? I'm sure she does. But at times she's just like, it's not even worth it. It's for my babies. And, you know, I feel like that's where you can start there. If you feel like you don't need to do anyone favors, that's okay. Buy some crayons for a classroom. Buy some stacks of paper. You know, I know during school supply season, we call it a season, right? <laughs> During the time when, you know, um, children are going back to school, you know, a lot of paper is like uh, 10 cents to 20 cents a pack, you know, crayons are less than a dollar. I feel like this should be on that side. Three cards each, three cards each now. And this one. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you should start there. And you're going to see how good it feels. We'll put this right here then between both of you. You know, you're going to see how beautiful it feels, you know, when that child's face lights up because they have new crayons. Or maybe like you can sponsor a child, you know, whose parent is really, you know, falling on financial hardships. You know, like ask a teacher, hey, you know, is there a family struggling? You know, maybe I can buy that child some school supplies or some new shoes or something. And I'm feeling like I'm crying right now. I don't know why. So maybe maybe if you were to do this, you know, 
and not expect anything back, I feel like your heart will just sing with joy. And you will see that blessings start to come to you in the long run. If it's not children, you know, maybe maybe an animal shelter. If it's not an animal shelter, do you have a, a teenager or someone in your family who's struggling? A conversation. You don't have to buy them something, but a kind conversation. Hear them out. Don't judge. Don't give advice. Just listen. And that's something I'm learning from um, my good friend, Audra. Um, and you know, she told me that one time and I'm like, wow, you know, I'm always so used to giving advice, you know, why not just sit there and listen? And, you know, some of my, my good friends who have come to me, you know, I just sit there, I'll listen or they'll message me. I listen, I read it and I just take it in. And, you know, I, I've always been that type. If you need to vent, come to me. I'm not going to tell, I'll take it to my grave. I'll never judge you. Just come to me though. Don't keep it in. And I feel like, you know, if you do something like that, that's beautiful as well. Okay? Just keep that in mind, okay? No judgment. Never no judgment. So let's see here. Yeah, you see, we have this King of Swords in reverse, or not in reverse, but, you know, his back is facing you. So it's like he, your, your ex or your person becomes cold-hearted, you know, and they're kind of, you know, they kind of become imbalanced, but at the same time, they are very neutral and they try to see it from both sides of the situation. But again, they feel like, you know, there is, there's not an equal give and take in the relationship. Okay. I feel like this relationship has potential, but the truth is you two are just, you got, you guys came together just to teach each other to grow spiritually. You both are bringing out the shadow aspects of each other and you are working on, on, um, you each are working on yourselves. Okay. And I feel like you're going to move yourself away from this relationship. Okay. Or if you want a positive change, you know, of course you love them. But if you want a positive change, you need to go. You need to be the one to walk away because no matter what, they're not going to walk away. They're just going to stay here and write it until you two completely hate each other. And I know you don't want that. Okay. I feel like it's a new start. Okay. You, you have an opportunity to move on it's like some kind of creative project a new job something um if it's a job i feel like it's like an office job or let me see i'm sorry my microphone's getting all tangled you know it's like i don't know you just you have a new endeavor definitely that's going to release some of the burden um off your shoulders whether it's financial less work or something and you're going to be moving away from this situation and, you know, what's beautiful is that this is, you know, the start of, you know, a new beginning. It's a new birth. You're finally going to come into your own, you know, because, you know, you did follow your own mind. But you'll see that if you were to kind of change the aspects of yourself and become just a little bit more giving, but maintain a healthy balance between giving and allowing people to take advantage of you, you're going to open your heart up more and you're going to become more prosperous, okay? Okay. Um, so just to recap, okay, they feel entitled and, you know, you're just kind of bitter in a sense, or you've worked so hard for something, you just feel like you shouldn't give it away where to as they are more giving. Um, I feel like, you know, when you stand your ground and, you know, you're like, no, I'm not going to allow these people to take advantage of us. They don't need our help. They misinterpret that. Okay. Now, what hurts here is that they become cold and distant towards you. And I don't know if it's that you want a reaction out of them or what, but you start to fight and say things that hit below the belt. I do feel like this partner comes to you to, you know, probably make up or, you know, if you two were married, it might have even have led to divorce. OK, I'm getting that for a very few of you. And then again, imbalance. Um, I feel like there was like um, there wasn't your partner feels like there wasn't an equal give and take in the relationship, you know, where they tried to apologize to you. You probably didn't accept it right away or you just 
you just didn't feel that you were wrong in any situation, okay? Regardless, the relationship is meant to break up, but you two came together to teach each other something spiritually and on a soul level, and you two will be growing from this relationship, okay? I feel like the words grow apart, just it just suits this, okay? You two kind of grew apart. You know, basically their purpose was to help remove you from a situation um, in your life where you were going through a really dark time maybe the dark night of the soul with her coming out of um what is it Hades the underworld you know he brought her back from the underworld and um you know you probably transformed into this person where yes you know you had to work so hard that you know you felt like you didn't have to give your fortune to other people when you're the one who worked for it but you're also learning to kind of balance that out as well, okay? But again, you will be removing yourself from the situation. You're moving on to a better opportunity. This is going to be a very prosperous time for you, okay? Um, yeah, together, the, this it, it, there needs to be a change, and that changes too. Um, you know, the, the changes for you two to part, you guys have really, um, you two have really, you know, run your course, okay, you two have um, served your purpose together, they're learning something, you've learned something, now it's time to part, and this is going, this is signifying a very new start, it's a new start in each of your lives, okay, alrighty, so pile number one, thank you so much for bearing with me through that, I do appreciate each and every one of you, again, you know, if I said something offensive, I am sorry, but it's just what I saw, um, as always, take care. God bless you. I love you guys so much, okay? Take care. Hello, my pal number two, for those of you who chose the beaded bracelet, okay? Let's see here. Okay. This one's giving me a heavy energy, um, very heavy. I'm feeling like one partner, like, they really got to go. Um, and they, they know that they got to go and meaning they need to remove themselves from the relationship. Um, I don't know. I'm going to try not to, you know, because the last reading I got, like one side was definitely, you know, the viewer. And, you know, as I said, I'm going to try not to judge, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to judge, but I'm trying not to, you know, like, oh, you, 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 you did this, you know, but uh, let's see here. Okay, let, let's just get on with it. Let's see here. Okay, so I feel like, you know, this partner loves to have a good time. They love to celebrate. I feel like, you know, they have this very childlike innocence to them where they don't know any better okay but I feel like I feel the vibe of you need to grow up you, you common sense dude <laughs> so I feel like this can be your partner definitely um when it comes to facing challenges it's like they just kind of fold just a moment sorry pal to uh, there were vacuuming outside but um okay so Let's see here. Mm, that's what I was getting without even reading the meanings. But what I was getting when I was laying out this side of the cards is like, I don't know if the partner works in the justice system or, you know, maybe they're a lawyer or something of the sort. Hang on, pal number two. Alrighty, and we continue. So I don't know if they work in the justice system, their law enforcement, um, or they have like a lot of friends in the legal system, and they might um, they might be using misusing that power, you know, like when it comes to like um, intimidating you or, you know, um, trying to keep you in check. In other words, like I feel like you know the challenges that they face with parting with you or something of the sort. I don't know why it, it's not even. The way it's coming to me is like they try to keep you at bay, I guess. What's the message?
they already know whatever moves you're about to make. And so they kind of counter that with like, oh, well, if you leave me, I'm taking the kids or, um, you know, they, they basically use their power to like irritate you sometimes. I don't know what power they have, but, you know, especially if they're in the justice system, whatnot, I don't know. I mean, some people are like that, right? Um, or maybe, you know, like, I don't know if maybe you work at like a family's uh, business or something. I don't know, but it's something of the sort. Um, basically, they know that in leaving, if you leave them or if you two part, if you piss them off, that your life will just totally go down the drain or, you know, be different. I also feel like a toxic trait of this side is that they love to drink a lot. They might not stay home a lot. I feel like if they work, especially in the law field, you know, they might go out to celebrate their victories a lot and they might be out at all hours of the night acting like they were, you know, I feel like it's again, like a grown person a man a woman or whatever who acts like they're like 18 19 years old in college you know just partying the night away without a care in the world you know not realizing or not giving a care to the fact that they're in a partnership and they need to respect that partner by at least giving a phone call like hey I'm gonna be out all night you know don't wait up for me you know oh you're not okay with it okay I'll, I'll, you know what I'm saying like kind of compromising you know it's just all about them but but I feel like you know that they are really really they are really good at heart, you know, like they just, they love fairness. They're very professional. They have a respect for, you know, for both people when they're arguing, you know, like they see it from each point of view. But when it comes to you and them, it's like, it's just so different. Like, I feel like, you know, look, pile number two, you're going to not want to hear this. And I am so sorry. You're going to probably hate me. And you know what? This might be something you need to hear, but I feel like you're the toxic presence in their life. I feel like they're they're a little toxic, but you bring that out in them, okay? And I'm sorry. Forgive me. You know, if that's not what you want to hear, feel free to click off this video, okay? I'm sorry. If you're still here, welcome, okay? Welcome. Thank you. Just hear me out, please. If this is you, I feel like you cause a disharmony in the relationship by letting out the relationship's secrets. You know, like if he has, I, for some reason I'm getting like erectile dysfunction. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Okay. Or I feel like, you know, like he snores, he talks too much or, you know, that you, you basically bring out the negative traits of him and you let everybody know about it. And I feel like you two have mutual friends and it gets around quick and he ends up being the joke a lot. Just a moment. I keep hearing do something for money, do something for money, like you do something for money. And it's not work. I, I don't know if it's... God, I hope you wouldn't be blackmailing your partner. That's crazy. Mm. Jesus. Yeah, you know what? I already know whoever chooses this, and I'm saying you, you, you. I I already know it's going to cause some problems. So again, I'm sorry this might not be the reading for you. You might want to choose another pile, another reader. I'm really sorry, you guys. But what I'm what I'm hearing here is that this side right here, okay, I don't even want to say you because I don't know you guys, you know, like that. I mean, it's just basically it's like this side is materialistic. They don't see the relationship as, you know, wanting true love, someone to grow old with, someone to share memories with. It's all about what you have. It's all about, you know, there's, there's nothing spiritual within the union. You know, there's no, there's no real solid connection. It's all about status. It's all about wealth. It's all about power. But I feel like, you know, that power that comes with being with this partner, it's a double-edged sword and it cuts both ways. Where it works to your benefit, it could also work against you. 
And I don't know if maybe, you know, your partner's all like, you know, stop telling our secrets and I'll give you money or something like that. You know, I don't know. I'm just getting this vibe of like scared, very scared. Yeah, it, this energy is like you're not, you or whoever this energy is, is not in tune. You know, is not in tune. You know, you just, you just see the material aspects of the world. That's it. I feel like this side, you know, if it's a man, it's just like, oh, yeah, I go to church. I'm a good man. I, I go to I go to morning prayer. I'm a good man. Or if it's a woman, oh, yeah, you know, I, I wear this is just a joke, but I wear a Hamza bracelet. I'm spiritual. Or, you know, again, you know, I, I went to my daily confession. You know, if you're Catholic, um, you know, God is forgiving me and I'm I'm saved now. You know, I feel like there's just something truly shallow, just something truly shallow with this side. And, um, and, um, yeah, I, I just feel like you're in this union for the wrong reasons, you, them, but one partner, if you're the negative energy, your partner is definitely knowing that it's coming to an end. You both need to go. You both need to break up. Okay. And I know that's not what you want to hear. That's, you know, breaking up's not always the answer, but I'm just feeling one partner, especially a superficial, the other partner has status, has, um, wow, let me just see here. There you go. Like, I feel they love you. They see something in you. Okay, even though like, you know, they know you weren't born this way, you know, and they don't blame you for how you are. Mm. Okay. So look, mm. just wanted to fly out that way. You couldn't, I don't, you couldn't see it moving on the camera. This card here made a turn. I don't know if the cards are slick or what. I always take that as a sign, though. And then let's put this one in the middle. Mm, okay. Look, if this side is you and you're still with me, thank you. I don't mean any offense, but you need to change, okay? If you don't start seeing things for how they are, you know, seeing things from, you know, a non-materialistic point of view, it's going to end, Okay, you're going to feel left out in the cold. Every all your lifestyle right now, if you are living a lifestyle that's good, it's going to be yanked from you. Okay, this can cause depression, but this is also a spiritual awakening. Okay, I feel like even after this reading, there might not be a change. I don't know, but I feel like you know, they're trying to avoid going to that place of you know, oh, you know, I, I gotta leave this person, they're no good for me. I know they think it. But really sitting there and making that decision, you know, to have that talk with you, it's like they're really avoiding it. Friends are already telling them that this energy is the toxic energy in their life and they don't want to listen. But there you see, they are still facing. They are still facing them. Yeah, it's like in this darkness, they're finally seeing the light that if they part from you or, you know, even if it's, I don't, I don't know. I hope it's reverse. I hope this isn't you. But if it is, look, that your partner's getting ready to go. Your partner loves you, but they want a more uh, spiritual, more loving, uh, more, um, a more meaningful relationship. They want a soulmate connection. They don't want someone who is going to use them and with the full right here, they are they are definitely moving on to a new start. And what I am getting here, okay, what I'm getting here is that if you're in a partnership, I feel like they're already talking to somebody else. They're already with someone else and they're already going to have a new start with them. And this is going to cause heartbreak in your life. Hopefully this energy is you. Maybe maybe you're moving away from this partner. But look, if things don't change right away, your whole life is about to be upturned. So am I toxic? Is he toxic? I feel like this side is definitely the toxic one. You know, whichever side you chose, this side is definitely the toxic one. 
But again, this is going to be a huge change. A huge, huge change. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if this is you, you're the toxic one and you bring out the toxicity in them and they're searching for something more meaningful. Or they found it. Okay? And like I said, you know, no matter what they face, they're ready. If you're married and they're you're facing divorce, I mean they're ready. They don't even care anymore. They're just like, you know what, I just I need to break away from this. This is done. Okay, but I also feel again, you know. What I also feel is that this is a huge spiritual awakening for you and this is going to cause great change in your life whether you want it to or not, okay? Um, pile number two, that is it for the reading. Um, thank you so much for stopping in. I, again, I meant no offense. I meant no offense at all, okay? But, um, you know, thank you as always, okay? Take care, bye. Pile number three, for those of you who chose the um, Hansa Ai, okay? Okay, I, you know what? I had to take a break <laughs> from the other two piles. Pile number three, I was just, I am really debating uploading this reading right now. I really am, like, I don't know if you kind of saw the camera shaking. I was shaking my leg right now, like, I don't know how, how everyone's going to perceive this. I, I really don't, you know, this reading. Okay, but enough of my jibber-jabber. Let's get on to your uh, reading, okay? Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not trying to say, oh, this is you, this is them. I tried not to in the other two piles, but energy was just kind of just yanking at me, and it's really weird. But anywho, um, let's get on with the reading. Let's see here. I feel like this, this pile, this, this side here, it's like the partner, this partner really works hard for the money. This partner puts a priority on work. Yeah, it's like, let me see here. see here the truth is I'm not feeling I'm not feeling too much too much toxicity here I just feel like it's more one partner works they probably don't take uh, the other partner seriously um, Turns a lyric gift to negative or destructive effect. Mm, hold on. Princess of Swords. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, there is a little bit of toxicity here. Okay, what I'm getting here is... You know, this partner works hard, works all the time, works to provide, works to have. I don't feel like a materialistic vibe, but I just feel like it's, well, yeah, it is materialistic. Sorry. It's just more like, you know, like, say if you two were married, it's like, you know, well, as long as I work and I, you know, provide a house, if I provide, you know, nice things, you know, that's showing my love. But at the same time, I feel like a very possessive, um, distrusting type of energy um, you know, you, I feel like this side, like, stocks, you know, like, maybe this, this energy, social media, constantly texts, like, hey, where are you, where are you at? I wouldn't even doubt if you have, like, security cameras in the house to see what this person is doing, if you two are living together, it's just, like, a whole vibe of, um, you know, you don't trust them, um, you know, as long as you're bringing in the money, they just need to shut up and put up. And I'm not even saying this is you. This could be your partner because in the other two piles, this was more the viewer. I don't know why. But, um, you know, instead of being a knight in shining armor, I feel like they're more like a, a tyrannical type, you know, like not 
what is it? Usually the king is a tyrant. It's like one of those knights where they're, they're like a bully instead of like trying to help and save. Like, you know, they totally take advantage, intimidate, you know, something like that. I feel like... If you like try to bring, if you try to bring it up, like, hey, you know, babe, you know, you're, you're really acting like this or that, you know, they'll just try to laugh it off. Like, babe, you know, I had a bad day and I'm sorry I turned into a jerk, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm getting like that type, like they try to brush it off. Okay. So let's go with this one. So it's like with the two of arrows, the two of arrows, it's like not being able to make a choice of something, I believe. You know, you're kind of like at a, a stalemate where you're just there and you're like, should I stay? Should I go? Should I do this? Should I do that? But it's like you're always trying to save face. That, that save face is like a term like where you know you two are not happy or you're not happy but yet you go to like family functions and events and you know you smile and make everyone believe that you know you guys are in a truly happy marriage what i feel here is you constantly wait you wait for them to you know return from work you await for them you know to see what mood they're in And again, this is like a type of pile where it's like uh, entitlement, you know, like you feel entitled because you're a good wife, you know, that they should act a certain way or provide certain things. And I don't feel it's too much toxic, but I feel like you're putting too much on the illusion that, you know, just because a powerful man married you that you know it's true love or something I don't know I don't know why that's coming across like that but I'm feeling like power waiting entitlement there's just something here something here Okay, yeah, there, there is some level of toxicity here. It's like, it's like they work to provide and they put like a priority on work. I feel like, you know, they're really jealous, not possessive. It's just more jealous. You know, they create stuff in their mind, you know, like, oh my God, they're, they, you know, my partner's cheating and, you know, I, I'm away this long and they're probably in bed with somebody else. And, um... Which was this side, it's like, you know, personal gain, entitlement. I don't really feel an affair, but I feel like that's what they think. But I feel like you just constantly wait. And because you do, it's like you feel like you're deserving of, you know, everything that they have to work for. But I, I oh, okay, I get it, I get it. It's like you might allow them to believe that you're not waiting when really you are. You know, like just, I, it's like a, it's... It's like that type of relationship, like, yeah, I'm going to get him jealous on purpose. You know, when he's jealous, I feel like that's when he loves me. So, yeah, it, there is a level of toxicity here. I don't feel like it's as serious as the other piles, though. But, you know, you know how, you know, like I said, there might be security cameras in the house. So you get dressed up, like dolled up to the nines and then you let him watch you leave or whatever. Yeah, like I keep seeing like a security system and him on a phone. And, you know, really, you're not going out to cheat. You're just creating the illusion that you are when really you might be going out to a craft class or shopping and, you know, you're gone for days. And then he'll start, you know, looking at like, let's just say Facebook, Instagram. He's texting you like, hey, where the fuck did you go? 
sorry, but that's what I'm getting. And like, you just kind of ignore it. You're just like, well, well, you know, it's like a game of trying to keep him, you know, keep him chasing you. Yeah, it's like, you know when to, you know when to switch it up, you know, when to make him think, when to act like the good loving wife, when to cry and show your vulnerable side to kind of like manipulate him to kind of like chill the hell out from fighting with you or something, something like that. But it's just like emotional manipulation. I do feel there's love. There's definitely love. I, I feel like, you know, you two have had to go through a lot of battles. I feel like, you know, you two have really fought for this partnership. No matter how long you two have been together, you two are constantly trying to make everything work as much as you can. It's just something of creating the illusion and trying to get a rise out of each other. Like one of you loves it when the other is jealous. And it's not healthy. I feel like this is yours. This is his. <sighs> Let's see here. The beautiful thing about this pile is it has potential. I feel like both of you exhibit toxic qualities, but I feel like you two are always growing. Okay. And it, like I said, I feel like this pile only, it's like you two have faced so much together. Okay. If you're now separated, I feel there's a chance you two can get back together and it can actually work out because I feel this pile only. Okay. Thank God. I feel growth. I feel happiness. I feel, you know, a different person. That's what I feel. Oh, beautiful. You see where I be I get the page of swords vibe with this. Okay. But where I feel, you know, where he was very, um, you know, jealous and, you know, he would just be in his own head. You know, I feel like now it's going to be a meeting of the mind, something logically intelligent, you know, balanced and the union will be re-blessed, you know. It's like he's really looking at all the dark times with you two. He's really looking back and he's like, you know, I can change. I know she, I know she can change. And, you know, maybe she needed attention because I wasn't giving her enough because I was working. And, you know, I feel like now he's going to have a healthy balance with everything. Work, family, romance, love. You know, if he's the father of your children, that. I feel like he's going to be the man who can do it all. You know, I feel like he has like this newfound energy. He has this newfound, um, he has a new outlook on life. You, again, I feel like you are also looking back and you're looking back on life and you're looking back on the memories you two shared together. And you're probably even like, you know, I didn't like him going out as much or I didn't like him going away on business trips, but now you respect it. You know, you realize that now you can focus your energy on other things. You know, maybe you can go out with your sisters. You can just have a healthy um, outing with friends, you know, to dinner or breakfast or something. You can keep yourself occupied, in other words, with your own endeavors while, while your partner works. And I feel like, you know, you're just, you hit a victory in something, a, a victory that you're willing to celebrate. But I feel like it's going to be a celebration of coming back together and you two really look back on your mistakes and, you know, what you two could have done different, you know, as a couple. And I feel like you have everything to see everything through. You see, this is the vice versa deck, by the way. You see where the magician is, you know, creating everything. You know, and it's like, you know, now it's like, you know, for some reason I'm getting like you two can weather out anything. You two can, 
you know, like the start of the marriage, it kind of looks like chaos here with this, with the meteor kind of coming down and it looks like more coming down. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. And you know, you guys had all the resources to make this marriage start or, or relationship, whatever it was. And it's like, you have everything to see it through, to see it through to the end. Okay. So it's like, even if you two were separated or divorced, I feel like you two are coming together. If this just was a partnership that didn't work out for whatever reason, I feel like you two have separated for a time. You two have grown. You two are going to come back together. If you guys are still together and going through this, just know that things are changing. Things are definitely changing. You know, you're going to go through a few more hurdles, but it's nothing that you two cannot handle together. You two each have traits that you two need to work on okay they need to balance their home life and stop um i feel like maybe they're a bully to some sorts and then you you know how to get a reaction out of them so you know you guys just kind of do what you can tit for tat there you go Okay, but this is the only pile, thank God, where I feel like there is so much potential here. You two just need to work on a few more little things and you two will be fine. Okay, and you two have really looked back at your past mistakes or will be looking back at your past mistakes. And you two will now come together to make everything work out. Okay, pile number three, that is your reading. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I truly appreciate you guys and love you guys so much. Okay, uh, take care. God bless you. Bye bye.